Welcome everyone. Out of the woo here as the recording of this Tuesday, November 29th, 2022. Update. Mystery Funhouse is pretty much gone. Bulldozed, demolished, being erased from existence as I speak and stand here. A place that I have covered a multitude of times over the years. And the last time I was here, just on a whim, I put out into the universe that my thoughts were they were gonna tear this out and possibly build you know, condos, apartments, houses, restaurants, Universal Studios, Florida, right across the street over there, the Doubletree Hotel where I attended a horror convention months and months ago and I started my video across the parking lot at the Mystery Fun House. I am here to announce it is gone. As of today, as of the recording of this. History, or at least a good portion of it. In fact, you see pulling the trucks away here. Pulling out some of the debris for the former Mystery Fun House, a classic Central Florida roadside attraction, if ever there was one. Dang. So basically, I'm gonna show this, show what's left, because soon all this will be removed. There might be a little bit I could kind of say, even though it looks like most of it is gone. But this, this place is something that I have featured many, many times. And this will be the last time that I show it. Join me. Shall you? Back in the 90s, mid 90s, late 90s, I had the opportunity of going in Mystery Fun House a number of times. Obviously in those days, I didn't really take a lot of photos or video. Regretfully, there's a lot of things from earlier in my life that I did not document to its full potential. And now looking back, I kind of wish I had a lot more personal memories for posterity's sake, even though they are in my mind. And as of now, my mind is still kind of sort of working correctly. So I can kind of remember those, those memories. But they're tearing up the parking lot over there. The main building sat right over there. Used in the movie Parenthood, they had some animatronics. And last time I was here, I was wondering if those animatronics were still in the building from the scene from Parenthood. Kind of reminded me of Showbiz Pizza or Chuck E. Cheese type animatronics, the band that would sing. It's pretty much, pretty much a fact now those animatronics are not in there. I know it might not sound like much to those who are not familiar with this place, but this is a massive chunk of Central Florida roadside history. When you think of classic roadside attractions, think of 192, you think of Highway 192, think of International Drive. This is just off International Drive near Kirkman. Actually, I think it's right off Kirkman and I Drive. This is one of them. Think of the big wizard on 192, the gift shops, things like that. Well, there used to be a big wizard here as well. In fact, the wizard sat on the front of the building, which was right there. Gosh, there is nothing left. Nothing. They have been doing this for a series of days, obviously. I kind of missed out on the initial destruction. I don't know if anyone really even knew. Only those who were in the know would have known. They are really getting bound down to business. There's a beehive of activity in there. I'm gonna walk over here where there's a piece of artwork, kind of see what I can see. Florida DOT has a storm sewer right here. This great. See, they're doing some surveying too. There's some gentlemen down there in the middle of the road doing some surveying. And it appears as if this piece of heavy machinery, I can walk over here, and I'm not allowed to walk on the property itself, but I can walk up to the blue fence line but it looks like that this piece of heavy machinery is perched up on top of some of the rubble of the fun house. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh, this is the last glimpse. Dang, that's sad. The laser tag area. There was a dinosaur-themed mini golf course. And then, of course, the Mystery Fun House itself, the arcade. Now, a lot of it, the inside of it was gutted out for a long time, and it sat kind of desolate and empty. 
truck hole again. Whoever has bought this property is wasting no time with renovating it. Whatever's going to be here is going to pop up very, very quickly. Yeah, there is a lot of construction work going on inside there. All right, it looks as if they are hauling away the last remnants of Mystery Funhouse right here before my eyes. So they've leveled the building. Keep an eye out for any of those animatronics they end up in the dumpster. If I see the animatronics from Parenthood end up in that truck, I might follow that truck, I might follow that bird. Uh, remember that movie, Follow That Bird? I'm going to follow the animatronics, man, unless it's a bird animatronic. This is, a, this is really a bummer. Now, I know the place has been closed for a long time, but still, just knowing the history, the Orlando history of this. It is kind of interesting also how that piece of heavy machinery is up on top of the rubble itself. Okay, are they taking something out or putting something in? This is fascinating to me. Look, one of the trees over here has been uprooted. Just the whole lot has been leveled. A whole lot. There's a whole lot of leveling. All right, I'm gonna walk around a little more. Take a look at that open landscape. This is some prime real estate. As stated months ago when I was here, and I kind of wandered around the parking lot for the last time, and I thought to myself, they are probably gonna do something with this property because I noticed that they had uprooted the signage. There was a big, heavy stanchion sign in the ground that was like an anniversary from like 20 years ago of the property, like a 30, 30 or 40 or 50 year anniversary of Mystery Funhouse that had been here forever, even when it sat abandoned. They uprooted that, and that's what got me thinking, they are probably gonna tear this property down. There's gonna be a developer coming in. My thought was correct. My, my inclination was completely correct. So I wanna know what happened to that little stanchioned object, that heavy piece that was in the ground next to the front of the building, probably more over here. I wonder where that went. You can see a lot of the metal, the rebar, re, re, rebar or rebarb? You never know how to pronounce that. All that that made up that former roadside attraction. A classic, dare I say, probably one of the top 10 roadside attractions back in like the late 80s, 90s, that era. You see kind of the foundation of what's still there, but gosh, they have really made this place unrecognizable at this point. And I would imagine by later in the day, this last pile of debris will be gone. Pulling in and out of there. Just uprooting it all. 
This piece of art was placed here a while back, had nothing to do with the property itself. It was just off kind of the cusp of where the parking area was. I noticed last time I was here too, over on this corner, there used to be a driveway over here years ago. I guess they installed these electrical boxes and whatnot, and they blocked off that driveway. But this was around the back, the laser tag kind of entrance was around the back on this way as well. always think about progress and you know obviously things that aren't being used need to be torn down and if they're not used the, the exterior of a building isn't used for something else you need to move on to bigger and better things obviously but then I also think about documenting stuff like this I think I might have over documented this in the past and part of the reason I do that is a lot of things get leveled and I don't want to say, I yeah, I guess you could use the word regret, but sometimes things get leveled and then I think to myself, gosh, I, I, I filmed that once five or ten years ago and never did an update prior to them destroying it. With this place, I can say I did an exhaustive amount of videos that will kind of stand the test of time. You know, you know the internet just completely goes away. That is a quite a heavy piece of machinery. Look at that. This is fascinating to me. You see all the pylons in there that made up the roof line? This is a little piece that's over the fence that they haven't got to yet. Like X marks the spot here. Memories. Memories of a simpler time. You know, way before the internet, in the 90s. See, I think I got my first computer into the 90s, early 2000s. Before that, you had to do a lot of other stuff to entertain yourself. Stuff like places like this were really popular. Where, you know, now, I guess, you know, roadside attractions are still a thing. They are making a little bit of a comeback. But in my free time, when I wasn't working, I would go to a lot of the, the local Orlando roadside attractions, this included being one of them. I might have some photos. At some point when I get back to my home, later on, I'm gonna see if I have, I might have a photo or two inside there, but I don't really have many. If I do, it's probably less than three. I might not even have any. I'm just kind of going off top of, my, top of my memory if I have any or not. got inside too when it was sitting desolate and abandoned I got inside to two videos where I got inside one where I didn't get inside and one where I got inside that was like 2009 2010 one of my first videos easily searchable is that through the fence I'm sitting through the blue hue of the fence and obviously cannot go over this fence line you can only peek over it okay I think this steel caging might have been yeah i think the steel caging was the part the one section that was left over towards the back area of the laser tag if i remember right
So this is basically as another truck pulls some debris out. So the parking lot started right here and went that way. And then Mystery Funhouse started here and went all that way. So all over here was the parking area, but it's just all being leveled. just about where that guy's standing doing the having the survey marker there that's about where the front tower where the wizard was on the front of the building give or take and then over in here was the miniature golf course area and then the main building over there you know really once something is gone and leveled you really start to realize how much square footage and space very valuable real estate here. Prime real estate in the tourist area. Right across from Universal Studios. Florida, right over there. Over that berm. Some sort of survey marker right here as well. I don't know how all the survey marker stuff works, but this looks like something from the future, like an alien space pod here. Is that a camera? Or what is that on top of that? I'm not really sure. Oh, here's a relic. Look at this. Look at this old piece of signage. A little PVC coming up here. It's an electric box. Some light bulbs. One of the last relics here on the property. As you can see, right here is still technically on the property, but not over there where everything else is being torn out. And with the trolley going by over there, some of the original sidewalk, not only here, but also some of the original entrance in here being all torn up, just kind of all scuffled and damaged down there. Probably like one of a half a dozen people who probably even really care of the history of Mystery Funhouse, but yeah, I don't know. It's kind of kind of cool to reminisce. I've been on a reminiscing mood about Central Florida's attractions like that. Goodbye, Mystery Fun House. Goodbye. I thought that was a leaf blower over there, but it's a, a hedge trimmer. Makes the same sound. I'm also noticing over here, so this is kind of one of the lights from the property, even though there's nothing on the sign it's pointing up at. You can find, a, you used to be able to find a few of these on site as well. And this is kind of as, almost as heavy duty as that sign I was talking about that had the, the logo of the establishment on it and everything that they uprooted five, six, seven months ago, what gave me the thought that probably they're gonna remove that and save it. It was something similar to this, but it was located was located over there and that's what gave me the impression yeah they're probably gonna tear all this out and they did here's a photo of what it looked like back in its heyday back in its prime now they moved the wizard off years ago i think in 2002 they took the wizard down but the exterior still looked the same all those years later of course till now when they just tore it out i really like this as well this is the guide map with an artistic rendering of what the wizard looked like look over here here's the wizard saying there's a mystery mini golf too, a one of a kind carpet golf course. And this shows where it was located right here. This is like a little guide map to where you could find it. Be kind of cool to have one of these. This is just something I found online, but I, don't, I do not own, at least I don't think I own a mystery fun house guide map anywhere. Not too far away, just a few blocks away from where I just was. Also, side note, I've been contemplating starting another band. Not, nothing too serious, but I've kind of been thinking about it. Thought about maybe reinstating one of the bands I used to be in, trying to see if we do like reunion or something. But the more I think about it, it'd be kind of nice to start like a new project. 
I don't know if that'll ever happen. I did buy a bass guitar about a year ago, a new one. I mean, I have a couple of the older ones that are not in the best shape. So I've been messing around with the bass guitar in the last few days, kind of getting the chops back up. And stopped over here at George's Music, the Musicians, Musicians Superstore, which has been around for as long as I can remember on International Drive, to look at some, you know, other, other things that you would need to start a project like that. I'm just not officially announcing anything. It's just kind of like thinking out loud. It might not even happen. I changed my mind kind of the way the wind blows, but it has been on my mind. But stopped off at here just to do a little window shopping. And it's closed. George's Music Musicians Superstore on International Drive. Gone. Closed down. And there used to be a DeLorean, not a time machined out DeLorean, but there used to be a DeLorean right out front that was perched up with its wheels on these two rocks. It's gone. What happened to the DeLorean? Is there like something that has to coincide with Mystery Funhouse? If Mystery Funhouse goes, then George's Music Musician Superstore has to go? Also over there you can see the volcano from Volcano Bay Water Park. You can see it kind of through the trees. Dang! This place was like a staple for a long time. And according to the sign on the window, it has been moved to an online division. So not even gonna be an active store anymore. Where's the DeLorean? I show this DeLorean a bunch of times too. I drive around the circle and see the DeLorean and show it. Wow. Two things was not expecting to be gone today. I mean, I kind of expected the Mystery Funhouse, but I wasn't expecting George Music. And since I'm on iDrive and in this neighborhood, I'm gonna stop off here at Volcano Golf. Golf. G-O-L-F. Volcano Golf. I showed Volcano Bay, which is across I-4. But on this side of Interstate 4 is Volcano Golf. I've showed this before in the past, but one thing today has taught me, and recent events with progress has taught me, anything can be torn out at any given time. And who knows, there might come a point when this dinosaur, this mammoth, this miniature volcano, this whole golf course could be torn out. This also, prime real estate, valuable real estate here on iDrive. I have a soft spot for miniature golf course places too because I worked at one, River Adventure Golf, which is gone completely on Highway 192. I worked there like in the late 90s and there's nothing left over there. All the theming has been removed. And if we were to remove this, where would that dinosaur go? Where would this mammoth end up going if they leveled all this area? And do not come over here to park because you're not allowed to park unless you're going to Volcano Island, which I guess technically I am. I parked the next parking lot over but I could have parked here because I am here for Volcano Island even though they are closed there's a big tiki that's fallen on its side over there that is a really large lizard kind of hard to gauge how big that lizard is, but trust me, it's pretty good size. Look at the door frame. So that's a full size door frame. And that lizard is like 10 times the size of a normal lizard. <laughs> Moose out front should have told you. It says open here, they spray painted over that. Kinda wonder if that bridge is even structurally sound anymore. I wouldn't go walking across it, obviously, but. Oh, this angle of the dinosaur 
I got this dino's mouth right here. Saw the different angle, but look at this. Slightly horrifying. Part of the unfenced off area of the former mini golf course. One of which hole that is, I and mean, that's one of the holes. This one is on the other side of the fence, on this side of the fence. See the theming there with the bridge work and the stairs and all that. Just tore out another miniature golf course recently over at the Crossroads, which is the area when you're coming out of the Hotel Drive by Disney Springs. It used to be downtown Disney. That kind of empties out. I think it's on 535 where it connects with 535. Could be wrong on the name of that road, but where the Crossroads used to be with the Goodings and all that. They tore all that out. It used to be a soup plantation, sweet tomatoes there, and a miniature golf course pirate-themed golf course, all that has been leveled, so hey, you never know when another mini golf course is gonna bite the dust. This cracks me up. <laughs> Seems legit. <laughs> Highly doubtful, just saying. What's the old joke about go, person goes to the store, the sign says 24 hours, they go up and it's closed. And they go, what the heck? The sign says open 24 hours. And the owner looks at him and says, not in a row. Got that old, those old lamps up there. Here's an old lamp kind of grown over with some foliage. And there's the top of the dinosaur's head up there protruding above the palm trees. I have now made the commute to downtown Kissimmee. A little bit of a ways from where I just was. Parked in the structure that's behind me. And first thing I'm noticing is a repainting of this classic mural that has been here for a long time. But it was all sun bleached out, faded, and has been extremely touched up. Looking pretty good. Got the barber shop. Got the clown over here with his balloons. Got the mustache man. Got the candy and cake store. This is great. Years ago, I did a little walkthrough of this and showed all this, but it was hard to really tell what was here because it was just so faded out. Got the cats there, the dog chasing the cat that's going in the garbage. Oh, here we go. So in 1998, it was originally painted, then after it was faded out, there was a 2022 refurb. Looks good. Looks real good. A little tea time there. This guy always reminds me of Chevy Chase. I don't know why. He's Chevy Chase and you're not. And we got Richard Dreyfus over here. I don't think that's who that's supposed to be, but yeah, looks good. Uncle Jesse. The Dukes. There are two music stores down here. One is Lewis and one is Jammers. I'm looking at this little trolley right here. Matador's trolley at Broadway Plaza. I got my first bass guitar right up here on the right hand side years ago. I think it was 2001. I didn't start playing bass until 2001. I was born in 1974. So you do the math on that, I was, what, 27 years old before I first picked up a bass guitar? Located right over here by Bet Sprinkle. This little sculpture of her is in memory of her love of downtown Kissimmee. She's remembered for making downtown Kissimmee a better place to live and friendly to shop and more beautiful and colorful environment for all to enjoy. And she's over here by where, I'm just reminded as I walk over here that Jammers has closed. It used to be right here. No more jammers. No more jammers music store, but it was right inside of here, which is now a ballroom and event center. Yeah, I got my very first bass guitar. 
2001, started a first, uh, my first band shortly after that. Joined another band in 2003. Well, actually, I started another band in 2002 and another one in 2003, and then I was in that band for a while. And then joined another one way after that. But I can remember going in here, buying my first bass guitar. It was a PV, and I didn't even want to play it. The sales guy was like, hey, strap it on and try it on. And I had never put an instrument over my shoulder, held it, you know, held it, had no idea what I was doing. I took it home in the comfort of my own home in the apartment I had at that time, and that was it. I never really got really good at it, but I could play, I, I could hold my own. And that ended up, you know, becoming what it was. Never my fancy myself as a, a great bass player by any means, but if I learn the songs, I can usually, I can usually do all right. So we'll walk down here to Lewis and see what they got. I think Lewis might still be open, but Jammers is no more. Another place, bites the dust. All right, Lewis Music was open, which was a block or two from where the Jammers used to be. I asked the owner in Lewis when Jammers closed, that about 10 years ago. Which I guess I've just kind of been out of the loop for a while. Ended up getting an instrument cable. And for $50, got this little Squire amp that I can use to kind of practice bass in my place. And then if things progress, I can buy like a bigger rig as well. But I've been practicing the last few days. Just trying to get my chops back without being plugged in. So just having a little bit of a plug in. Trying to, you know, just to hear it a little more and feel that, feel that roar kind of help a little bit with the excitement of, of playing again. So yeah, this is just kind of for starters, but I bought a new P-Bass about a year ago. Pretty good shape. So I'm gonna plug that into here and to see what the future holds. And now back over to Celebration, where they have the Christmas tree adorning Market Street down there. The Snoop Celebration, which is snow and soap mixed. Started, I believe, last weekend. It's been pretty busy on the weekends. Right now, it's a little mellower. That's gonna do it for today. I bought a practice amp. Downtown Kissimmee. Checked out the final, very final moments of the destruction of Mystery Funhouse. And also some other things. The volcano. Dinosaur Volcano mini golf place and a few other things. But the, the whole point really was to show what's going on at Mystery Fun House. Another roadside relic. Bites the big one. This fountain is effervescently flowing. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. The vlog is over. <laughs>